It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know, know victory nor defeat. Theodore Roosevelt my name is Anthony Cornanser, or as I like going by, Tony Jode. I'm a thespian, writer, and musician, and a sophomore BA theater performance major here at Stockton University. And what you are watching now is the experimental beginnings of a new student television program at Stockton University that creates dialogue, promotes, and full-heartedly supports the arts taking place here at Stockton, in our region, as well as within the world at large. If ever there was a need for a Socratic dialogue for the arts, now is the most necessary time for it. Now is the time, and this is Painting Canvas. <laughs> Hi folks, welcome back to Painted Canvas. Uh, just to reiterate and refresh everyone on the numerous projects and events that have taken place up to now on campus for the past several months. Last February, I was a part of the theater program's production of Intimate Apparel by Lynn Nottage. Amongst a really amazing and dynamic cast and crew, we shared the story of Esther Mills, an African-American seamstress in early 20th century America in New York, who makes the acquaintance of a man working on the Panama Canal named George Armstrong, solely just through letters. As Esther offers more and more of her heart to George, she learns that even in making herself the most vulnerable to him, she learns that even in making herself the most vulnerable, that he's not the man that she initially thought he was or desired. The play offers a perspective on the varying groups within early 20th century America that desire and yearn for so much, and yet there are such glaring obstacles that preclude them to pursue that desire and intimacy. The play was very warmly received by all audiences who attended, as well as by the Kennedy Center's American College Theater Festival respondent, who handpicked our leading lady, Alana Harrell, for a role as Esther, as well as myself for the role of Mr. Marks, for a nomination in the Irene Ryan Scholarship, the most prestigious scholarship and competition in American College Theater that takes place every year at the American College Theater Festival. Directly transitioning from this, the theater club also hosted its annual 10-minute play festival, where I featured my play, Coming Home, that I directed and wrote in Professor Ken Kaser's playwriting course. In developing the play, I was directly influenced by a painting by Edward Hopper entitled Cape Cod Morning, in which the given protagonist and subject of the painting was gazing intently out across a field. The impression that was stimulated from me was that of hope, and then I imagined the various things that we hope for and how, at times, in spite of the truth, we know that it's just impossible, and how we still hope all the same. Here's a recording of the piece provided by former theater club historian Madeline Welch, and featuring performances by student actors Amanda McGinnis with the role of Lucy, and John C. Wood IV as the role of James. And that, once again, this is my time to play that I wrote and directed entitled Coming Home. Please enjoy. should be home today. Why isn't he home today? I have this tradition that ever since Kevin went off to war, I, I made a point of waiting for him every Saturday, as if that would just magically bring him home. I like to imagine every time I stare out into the field and down the road, I like to imagine a little soldier knows I'm waiting for him. Oh my God, can that be him? Walking through the field? I get calls, I hear any calls on the soul, but it's still. Wait, that's not Kevin. Why? Are 
new Lucy McFadden. Mrs. McFadden, I regret to inform you that Sergeant Kevin McFadden has died in the line of duty serving his country. But my deepest condolences are extended towards you and your family for this great loss. My son Kevin is coming home today. You would like to. You should wait with me. Ma'am, I'm afraid you don't understand. Sergeant Mc... Kevin has been shot and killed in the line of duty. He should be here soon. In a minute now. You have a lot like him. I think you two would just get along fine. Why, if With all due respect, ma'am, I understand it may be difficult to understand Mr. Your grief. However, acting as messenger to the next of kin, I am not permitted to leave until I'm certain the message has been received. Message? Oh, what message? My son Kevin, he sends me letters as often as he can, but they've been less and less frequent now. However, I understand the preoccupying services of Marines such as yourself. But I know he's coming home today. I feel it in my bones. Why, it just gives me the goosebumps thinking about it. Ma'am, I'm afraid you're not listening to me. I don't think you... Ma'am, could you please look at me? Ma'am, will you please look at me? I need you to look at me. I'm sorry. I do have a tendency of getting distracted from time to time. My Kevin tells me that all the time. Now, what was it you needed? Ma'am, I... Is it the other house you're looking for? Down the road there? 28 Cedar Road? This is 26 Cedar Road. It's a common mistake, really. People do that all the time, coming here thinking they have the right house when they don't. No, ma'am. I do have the right address. Really? That's, that's funny. Do you have it written down? Yes, ma'am, I do. Oh, well, let me take a look at it, just to make sure you're not all mixed up or anything. Well, may I? It's the fifth page, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, have you understood a single thing I've said previously? Well, let me see. I do have a tendency of staring off into the sky from time to time. They call me Sky Blue Lucy when I was in school because I daydreamed so much. I've been doing that so often, waiting for Kevin to come home from his service. One day, they'll all come home, you know? If you please, ma'am. Oh, Lucy, dear, I'm a bit young yet to be addressed in such a fashion. Okay, Lucy, as I tried to mention earlier, I'm sorry, sir, but I can't find the address or the other address on here anywhere. It's there, ma'am. It's towards the top of the page, underneath the one that has the line through. Well, I'm not going to bother to look for it until you tell me what exactly it is you want here. That's just the point, ma'am. Would I... you stop it with that ma'am nonsense? I thought we'd been through this already. I understand what it is with handsome young men such as yourself trying to be all firm and blah, but really it's Fine, Lucy. I need you to cooperate when I tell you that Sergeant Kevin McFadden, your son, has been shot and killed in the line of service. He's dead. Deceased. How dare you come into people's homes like this and spread in such lies? My son Kevin is not dead. He's alive, and he's brave, and he's more than half the man that you'll ever be. Come to people's homes like this, you insensitive bastard. Why don't you just get God out of here? God damn it, woman! He's not coming home! Don't you understand that? He's dead! Killed! Shot in the fucking head! Whatever the hell you want to call it! And the thing is, he's not the only one. He's not going to be the only one. You're not the only one who might have to give the message to that their boys aren't coming home. I'm behind schedule. Lord, I can't keep doing this. Why this? It's like I'm dying over and over again looking in their eyes. I'm sorry, ma'am. For everything. God, am I sorry. But he is coming home. Please wait. My son Kevin is coming home to his mom. He's crossing the field now. Yes. Please come home to me, Kevin. Don't leave me waiting like this.
Come home. Come home. We all have to hold on to hope, don't we? In spite of the truth we know and the truth we refuse to accept in a given situation, we still need this hope to survive and keep going, and keep going, even when we know it only to be false. Moving on, going through some more events that have taken place on campus, following the festival, the dance program featured its annual A Concert of Dance in March, which featured pieces choreographed by students, professors, and even guest artists, including from John Lehrer, whose dance company of the same name was our residential dance company here at Stockton last fall. In helping to usher for the show, what really stood out to me in the company was truly diversified and varying forms of energy and ambiance throughout the concert, particularly in transitioning from esoteric and abstract pieces to pieces that were more fun and ensemble-based to really poignant and isolated pieces. There was, I felt, a perfect sense of variety that made the performances that much more effective. Uh, from here, the theater program then featured its production of Sondheim and Lapine's Into the Woods early in April. Now, if you're familiar with, at all with the show, I'm just going to ask you to throw it out now. Particularly those who only seem to know it through the seemingly bastardized Disney adaptation, which really continues to befuddle me. Anyway, and being a swing in the ensemble for this production... What we really wish to accomplish as a production team with the dramatic concept and vision of the most recently added assistant theater professor and Broadway veteran, David Reeser, was to, reta was to retell the story of the show, except in a major Brechtian meta-theater vein in which the setting of the show, we changed it to taking place now in a high school. So now suddenly we didn't just have students playing classic fairy tale characters but rather they were also simultaneously high school archetypes playing these fairy tale characters. If you got a chance to see it, great. If not, you really missed something very special with probably one of the most ambitious shows Stockton has taken on recently as a theater program, and also truly serving as a diving board for all that is yet to come for other shows that we've proven to ourselves to be more than capable of doing and actually having now a musical theater program and now planning to consistently produce musicals every year from here on out, which we're all incredibly excited for. In other news, a young club that I'm also a part of known as the Creators Collective also hosted in early April in collaboration with the Pride Alliance we have here on campus, a gay prom which had an excellent turnout for members of the LGBTQ community as well as allies to have a fun, laid-back, relaxing night with a killer DJ and a lot of great time to socialize and just dance around and have fun. I can certainly say for a fact that all of us as a cast from Into the Woods very much turned it up with our arrival following our last-to-closing show. Man, I keep forgetting how uh, theater folk can party. Uh, all of that aside, uh, we hope as a group of artists and as a club to collaborate more in hosting events such as these, just so that everyone knows that they have a place amongst friends to stand in solidarity with, even amidst of major, major political and social turmoil in today's world. Anyway, later in the past month, I also had the opportunity to work as a stage manager for the most recent Quarry Project 39 from the dance program. This ambitious venture was the first time the program has ever hosted two of these student choreographed dance con concerts, which is a nice sign of expansion within the program. This being said, I was honored to have worked in helping to bring this concert to its feet and making these student pieces look even more good than they already were on their own. What really impressed me about all these student choreographed pieces was how unique and diversified they all were from each other and how each dancer was able to utilize her own sense of style and technique within their work. Plus, it was also an incredibly nice bonus to also gain a great deal of technical experience and awareness, not to mention confidence, through my work and collaborating with the company once again, once again as a stage manager. I hope to do more. And if you haven't ever checked out the dance company here at Stockton, please, I dare you, give it a shot. Seriously, you don't know what you're missing. And that being said, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back after these brief messages. Hi folks, welcome back to Pan Campus. I was mentioning previously about numerous events on campus that were taking place 
of great opportunities that you really shouldn't miss. And a great example of that it is actually the most recent I Have Sex hosted by The Theater Club, in which our theme this year was entitled A, Ser- a Night of Sexual Events. So, yes, pun very much intended with the recent Netflix show A Series of Unfortunate Events. Except our events, however, had an array of talent that includes skits and scenes performed by the theater and dance clubs. And throughout the night, held information on sexual education and awareness provided by the wellness Cel- uh, excuse me by the wellness center, and accepted various donations that went to the South Jersey AIDS Alliance. So yes, very very awesome and sexy vibes throughout the night. Moving on from this, some other events that have taken place on campus from outside guests and groups uh, include uh, Rachel Kaloff, a memoir with music, last January. It was a one-woman show featuring Kate Fugley, a professional actress who at one time collaborated and is a contemporary, as a matter of fact, of Stockton's theater program coordinator and professor Pam Hendrick. The the, uh, performance itself was based on Rachel's memoir with an adaptation by Ken uh, Lesbenick and musical score and lyrics by Leslie Steinweiss and direction by Ellen Prespin. Uh, The play in itself recounted Rachel's experiences in immigrating to North Dakota in the United States from Russia with an arranged marriage to a man she had never met previously and actually having nine children by him and all the while surviving on the Midwestern prairies as a homesteader. What really impressed me with Miss Fugley's performance wasn't just her incredible ability to not just encapsulate and honestly portray Rachel's character as well as the numerous characters she interacts with, her miming skills also as well as her rather pointed singing skills but she also had such a raw and honest intensity to her demeanor as an actress that anyone would be in awe of not to mention her character and dialect was also incredibly influential on me in trying to create my own portrayal of the character mr marks from intimate apparel as mentioned previously uh, the character in himself was actually an Orthodox Jew from Romania in early 20th century America, around the same time that Rachel's story took place, so I find it incredibly interesting how both stories are very similar to each other. Anyway, another performance I had the pleasure of attending included a charity concert featuring Lucy Kaplinski as a part of a series known as Folk Across the Street, which supports marine science through numerous concerts they hold. Uh, the proceeds of this concert went to the Stacey Moore Hagen Fund here at Stockton, which is a scholarship for natural science students. The concert was incredibly laid back and very relaxing. Ms. Komplensky featured a numerous array of her songs from her various albums, as well as songs that she covered and she personally liked as well. Uh, that, was, that was also probably what was really unique about Ms. Komplensky's performance that night. It was just this really immersive and unified ambiance that wasn't just exactly like a typical concert or a higher performance. It was really rather a collective gathering all in all of audience and singer songwriter that was as soothing as it was really organic. All this being said, in the course of this past semester too, I picked up and read playwright and director David Mamet's Three Uses of the Knife on the Nature and Purpose of Drama. The treatise of the role and function of theater and art in society for me provided really insightful and essential details on what Mamet breaks down to specifying that dramatization and theater in itself is a part of our inevitable human nature and we need it for our survival as it's all around us. What What distinguishes true art and drama from just entertainment as well as just deluges of information as well as breaking down that as actors as well as people, we all have our own specific functions and motivations to what we do. Our own use of the knife, if you will. Uh, That's as separate and unique specifically to the individual, him or herself. Such work I find in today's world to be all the more necessary to read in midst of such uncertainty in the world today. And that somehow we keep going on, and then all the more we need to remember the interconnectedness of art in our lives and what truly resonates with us and provide meaning to us as well as meaning towards our existence. All of this being said, I would like to close now with a featured poem of mine that was inspired from the mere fact and epiphany, if you will, that we all grow and bloom according to our own time and expectation with nature, no one else's. It's entitled Infinite Blossom. Some small little trees finally began to bloom 
back to back, these buds looked like young pink birds and caped with brilliant red wings. This seems very recent. It sure is about time with these signs of spring. But still, they bloomed by themselves and to themselves and to their own time. And these are but small trees too, but still, they don't see themselves as insignificant or even as being small, not like how we determine fa value by size and grandeur. And they don't see themselves as blooming late or even on time, just blooming because it was time, as it is and shall be for all that bloom underneath this limitless canopy and on this boundless stage. Either way, everything is an infinite blossom, always. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the managers at Stockton Student Television, Mike Mastery and Kadara Dockery, for helping me to put this pilot together. There will seriously be more to come, sincerely. Uh, please feel free to check this episode out, amongst others, on Stockton Student Television's channel, as well as their channel on YouTube. And please follow this as well as other projects of mine personally at TonyJoe.com, as well as on my personal Facebook page, Fingerprints. Once again, this is Painted Canvas, and I hope to see all of you next time. Keep seizing the means of creating, friends. I'll see you soon.